Hi everyone, I'm Katherine Ayers. I'm a gaffer here at the Corning Museum of Glass. Uh, this week we're going to be watching the video where I made the glass astronaut, or as we like to call it here, the glastronaut. And so I haven't seen this video yet, and I'm going to be watching with you and chatting along. So I'm excited to watch and talk with you a little bit. So if you have any questions, let me know. Enjoy the show. Bye. I'd like to introduce you to Katherine Ayers. She's going to be the master glassblower for this late show this evening. She has a great piece in mind for you. How about we give her a nice warm welcome? We also have Chris Rochelle is going to be here to assist Catherine. Benjamin Ewing as well. My name's Jay. I'm going to narrate you folks through the glass making process. I'd also like to welcome any of you folks that are tuning in. We're live streaming this glass blowing demonstration for you folks tonight. Now, Catherine has a really special piece in mind here. If you look over at the whiteboard in the corner of the studio, you can see that Catherine's going to make a sculpture of the moon. She's also pre-made some parts. We're going to sculpt an astronaut. We're gonna put all that together to have a beautiful sculpture of a moon and an astronaut waving down at Earth. So the glass making process for this, it starts very similarly to many of the other things we make here in the amphitheater hot shop. And it all starts with a few gathers of glass out of our melting furnace. Now the melting furnace here in the center of the hot shop holds around a thousand pounds of our soda lime glass melted at a temperature of 2100 degrees Fahrenheit. Now at that temperature the glass drips and flows. It responds to gravity. It's kind of like the consistency of table honey. And it's also sticky. So Catherine's not kept that clear glass clear for long. She's already started to coat this hot sticky glass in our crushed up colored glass called Frit. She rolls that hot glass through those crushed up granulars of glass. It kind of sticks to the hot glass like sprinkles on an ice cream cone. Now when we add that Frit to the glass, it has a raised texture. She goes back to the reheating furnace to melt that in, to make it smooth and seamless. You can see that Catherine's put multiple coats on because she wants this to be nice and dense. The more coats of this frit she puts on, the more dense it will be. She's rolling through a beautiful opal white color. Once she has the amount of frit that she wants, she'll start to shape this glass. She's shaping it using a steel table now called a marver. Making that nice cylindrical shape. Now, many of you are probably wondering what we're making at this moment, and this will be the body of the astronaut that's on top of the moon. So this process will go in many different steps, but it's a great demonstration for you folks here this evening because you're going to get to see a lot of different styles of working with glass. Right now we're going to do some solid sculpting and bit work. And later on when we make that moon, it will actually be hollow. It will be a large blown bubble with a lot of texture and pretty intricate color application. So Catherine's let this glass cool down a little bit. It's now set up. It's firm. It's rigid. She'll gather a little bit more glass on the top of that. Now this is just a thin coat, a strip coat of glass here. So she's cutting away that excess material. This is a great example of why you'll see Catherine turning this glass throughout the entire process. You can see when she stopped turning and held that iron straight up and down, that glass just dripped right onto the table.
We'll heat that back up. And once it's hot enough, she'll actually be able to work the glass. The glass cools rather rapidly as we work it. So it's very important to go back to the reheating furnace to build up that heat. She's using one of the most versatile tools we have. These are called the jacks. creating a few constrictions, which will ultimately be the legs of our astronaut. So she'll cut right through that hot glass to start to form the legs. Now you'll really see this piece evolve throughout the process. There's probably going to be times here when you're looking at what Catherine's doing and it won't make too much sense, but that's kind of the beauty of glass, especially sculpting because a lot of the time it doesn't look like the final product until the very end. So she's cut those two constrictions for the legs. She'll start to stretch, cut away excess material. That thins the glass. It also gets it the shape she's looking for. And she'll use a variety of hand tools to sculpt this glass. Most of them are metal. In this case, you probably wouldn't guess it, but she's using a butter knife, just a regular butter knife. It's a fine tool for shaping hot glass. And the sculpting is a great example of how the glass moves. It's solid. Well, it's also a great example of how quickly that heat does cool down because each time Catherine comes back from the reheating furnace, she has a very limited working time. Probably less than a minute each time she's at the bench to kind of achieve what she's trying to do. She'll go back, reheat, and each consecutive heat, you'll really notice how the glass is moving once again. You'll see it get that characteristic orange glow. Now those tools she's using now, those are called the diamond shears. Not because they have any diamonds in them, but just because of the shape of the blade. I'll hold up another pair here. You can see they've got that diamond pattern in the middle. Very handy tool for cutting hot glass. There's a lot of fine moves it takes when you're trying to sculpt a figure out of hot glass. And a lot of teamwork involved as well. Over in the other side of the shop, you might notice there's quite a bit of activity. Now Chris Rochelle's over there. He's prepping some other parts. So we have a question from the audience, Catherine. I'm sure you wouldn't mind answering this. What made you start working in glass? Oh, that's, that's. So Catherine is from around this area. She grew up not too far from here. And the first time she actually blew glass was here at the Corning Museum of Glass, but across the parking lot at the studio. It's a fine question. All right. So now this astronaut's going to start to really come alive. This is a little boot. We've got these awesome folks on the camera today. So you can see a really good look up close at that first little boot of our astronaut getting added to the bottom of the leg. Catherine's been working all day prepping these different parts. So in the corner of the shop here, there's another oven called a garage. We'll talk a little bit about that because it's crucial to what we're making here. 
in the garage, we've got both the boots for the astronaut. We've got the little jetpack backpack he wears and the head and helmet in there. It's really efficient to pre-make a lot of these things, especially for this demonstration. We do have a limited amount of time this evening. But it also allows Catherine to really focus on each specific part. So she could really focus on making those boots the way she wanted, one at a time, put them in the garage over there. And then she'll just piece this astronaut together bit by bit. So Chris is picking up the second boot. And what he did was he took a small gather of glass out of the melting furnace and made what we call a punty. That's a temporary handle. He stuck that hot glass to the end of the boot where your knee would be or something. Yeah. He's flashing that piece, building up a little bit of heat. And then he's delivering these one at a time to Catherine. And he's preheating the top of that boot a little bit so that they have a nice hot seal, a nice hot connection when those two pieces meet. It's very important to have a nice hot connection. Most of this glass blowing process is so teamwork oriented. Timing, temperature, and teamwork. We call them the three T's of glass making. And they're communicating quite a bit throughout the process. Here you can see how easily that boot just sticks right on. And with a light tap, that punty breaks free. So we're moving right along here with our astronaut. making those subtle adjustments to make sure that the astronaut will be able to stand on the moon later on. Now we'll make this whole astronaut bit by bit and then we're actually gonna put the astronaut back in the garage. Now I've, I've just remembered, I didn't even tell you guys what the garage was. So the garage is a, it's another kiln so to speak and it sits at around 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Now at that temperature, the glass, it doesn't get so cold that it stresses and cracks, but it's also not so hot that it's moving. So it's set up, it's rigid, but it's a nice happy temperature where we can introduce it to the hot furnaces bit by bit. So we've got another question that's come in from our live stream audience. And the question was, when you use the wet wooden tools, why does it not break the glass? And that, that is a fair question there. So when we're using those wooden tools, the wet ones in particular, those are our wood blocks. Those are used for shaping and centering and cooling the glass. We only touch the wood blocks, the wet wood blocks to the glass when it's really hot. So it's not such a temperature that it's going to shock and crack the glass. If we were to touch a wet wooden block to a piece of glass like that Catherine had now that's a little more set up, it's not liquid hot, it would in fact crack the surface of the glass. Hopefully that answers that question all right. And when we're touching cooler glass with wooden tools, we make sure that they're not wet. 
so that they don't shock or crack the glass. All right, so a little update now. What's what we're getting into? So Chris over here is making what we call a sculpture punny. So he's made a little gather of glass on the end of a solid iron. And he's sculpted that punty, two little prongs off the end of it, so that he can stick, Catherine can stick that punty onto the little ends of the boots. So it's a tricky procedure. But there you go, you can see that she's making that connection now. making little crimps there so that later on we can ultimately break this piece free from that punty. We're letting that set up just a little bit and then a few drops of water on that constriction, kind of where the hips of the astronaut are, a few light taps and the piece should break free. There's the water, a light tap, and how about a round of applause for Catherine for that first punty transfer. Now that was the first of many punty transfers we're gonna go through this evening. We'll give her a round of applause every time because that is a delicate procedure. You really need to make sure that your timing and temperature are just right, that you're communicating together to make that glass break where you want it to break. So Catherine Ayers has been blowing glass for around 17 years now. So she's gonna make a lot of these steps look pretty easy, but don't be fooled. She's a very, very skilled glass maker. And she's had a lot of time to hone those skills over the years. And Catherine went to school up at RIT and studied glass there before coming here to work for the museum. So we've got a few different parts in motion now. Benjamin's got a little gather of white glass on the end of an iron. Chris is over here at the garage prepping another part. And all the while, Catherine's still working kind of now on the lower torso of this astronaut. Now, although she focuses that heat on the places that she wants to change, you'll notice she's frequently going, sticking the whole iron back in the reheating chamber because she can't let any one part of this glass get too cold. Otherwise, it could stress and crack, pop off of the iron. There's a great view now. You can see Chris is prepping. Said, I think he's got an arm over there. So now we're gonna do a really neat procedure here where Benjamin's gathered up that little bit of white glass and we're gonna wrap that glass around the body of this astronaut. I think that's the astronaut's belt. Now again, back to that furnace for a flash. Couldn't be much of a better piece for you folks here this evening to really showcase the teamwork involved in glass making, especially this kind of bit work where you're adding all these separate bits of glass one at a time. You've got to really rely on your team.
And they're just discussing right now which arm to put on first. Because Catherine did make a left and a right. So we've got another question from one of our online viewers, and it was, does the iron rods get too hot? Now, these are stainless steel bit irons we've got, blowpipes and bit irons. And the, to answer that question, they do get too hot, but we don't hold them too close to where the hot glass is to get burned. So you can kind of see a tarnished area on some of the pipes where it's darker towards where the hot glass is. And we make sure that we hold above that, that area, that danger zone. And we also, you know, as we work, the pipes might heat up a little bit too much when you're working big. And if that happens, which quite commonly it does, we've got this fine tool here. This is our pipe cooler. So we pump this pedal it fills up with water, and that room temperature water works just well enough to cool those irons down. And if any of you folks out there in the audience have any questions, you can raise your hand. We'd be happy to answer them throughout the evening to the best of our abilities. So we've got a lot going on over there now. They're getting their temperatures just right, spot heating those certain parts of the arm and the body of the astronaut to assemble this. So Chris, Chris is going to give that a nice flash. I see Catherine spot heating a certain area. So pretty soon, I'm sure, she's going to be attaching that arm. Yep, so here she goes. Touching it to the hot glass. And with a light tap, that iron breaks free. Very well done. Catherine, you're going to get a lot of applause tonight because you've got a couple, another arm to go, a head and a helmet. This is great. All right, so Chris is making that, that punty again. We'll get that second arm going. And after the arm, we'll have that We'll see, there's also a, there's that backpack in there and the astronaut's head. So we'll see what she chooses to put on last. This is a great place for an artist like Catherine to work and the rest of us in the hot glass team is we get to do these late shows every once in a while, these live streams and really work on kind of works of art that inspire us. Right here at the Corning Museum of Glass with a whole bunch of helping hands always ready to help you achieve what you want to achieve in glass. Now, how many of you folks saw a glass blowing demonstration here today? 
quite a few, quite a few. So this is a treat getting to see something much more intricate than our usual demos. Not that our usual demos aren't awesome, but not every day you get to see Catherine Ayers sculpt an astronaut out of hot glass. <laughs> Catherine says it actually happens more often than you would think, but. Now let's see, I think uh, we've got a, an astronaut Catherine made a couple months ago that kind of got her going with this, the inspiration for this piece. So this one's quite a bit bigger than the one we're making today, but you can kind of get an idea of the shape, the figure we're going for. She's got the same succession of bits on this astronaut as she she does on the one she's making this evening. All right. So there's that second arm. She grabs hold of the end of that punty. She squeezes with those shears because that shocks that cold glass, allowing it to break free when Chris taps that iron. Now, have any of you folks out there in the crowd ever tried glass blowing? A couple. Was it here at the studio? Excellent. Well, that's great. And the reason I bring that up is because here at the Corning Museum of Glass, you could make your own glass right across the parking lot at the studio. They've got a great team. They really make it a really fun experience for you folks. So if you want to try, they do... Uh, Blown glass ornaments, flowers, all sorts of things. It's a great, a great place to make glass for your first time. I think I see a few of them up there. You can always tell when there's glass blowers around because they know where the best seats are. You get the bird's eye view. So let's see what's next here. Astronauts really starting to take shape. What do you got there, Chris? The, uh, the helmet. All right. Excellent. So Chris is building up heat in the helmet of the astronaut. That's very important because it's solid glass. It has a lot of mass, so it holds heat for a long time. It's also susceptible to cracking and breaking if he was to bring that over too cold. He's building up heat into that, making sure it's going to come off of the end of that iron nicely. You can see he's torching, looking at those screens, he's torching that connection point. Chris will give that a little more heat, and he's going to bring that right over here to Catherine. We'll spot heat that neck area. Grab hold of the iron. He sticks that helmet right on and light tap, and there we go. How about that? Beautiful. So the last piece here, backpack. Got to have your air supply on hand when you're on the moon. So there could not be 
a proper astronaut without his backpack or her backpack. So in a similar fashion, this will be applied. She's making those subtle adjustments to that connection where the helmet goes on. It's really cool. You've got a really great close-up view there. You can see how she's shaped that kind of area where the astronaut's jacket would become, would be one with the helmet, that nice seal, that air seal. And I just saw a quick reference to her other astronaut. She's making sure she's got everything going to plan. There's also a couple more bits. She's putting those on right now. Now, this is a cool technique. She's got these glass canes, or glass stringers, we call them. They allow us to add really fine detail to the pieces. So she's putting on these little red and blue buttons onto the the front of the astronaut now. So she pre-made those, those glass stringers. She gathered up some glass, coated it in color. She stretched those stringers super thin, like a, almost like a, a toothpick or so. And she's heating up just the ends of them so they're red hot. And then she's applying those on using that hot torch. It's really hard to achieve something that small, that little little dot there without using those stringers. They're a really good tool for the job. And you can see that it's so hot, that hot torch, there's no need to cut the glass. She can just simply wind it up and cast it right off. And she'll use that, her, one of her favorite tools there, the butter knife, to make sure they're nice and flat and even. Benjamin's going to take a nice flash for her. And then I'm sure she'll start to spot heat the area where this backpack's going to go on. I just got a little live stream update. We have over 160 people viewing this from all over the world right now. And a couple people that we know that work here with us at the museum. Well, Megan, Matthew, and Helen Tegler watching from home. Little baby Gloria. Catherine says, hi, baby Gloria. It's one of our teammates, newest addition to the family, baby Gloria. She'll remember this night for the rest of her life. She's only two weeks old. <laughs> All right, so we're spot heating that area where that backpack's going to go on. Chris has brought that over. And there we go. That's the kind of the final piece of the astronaut there. Excellent. Yeah. So we're going to kind of work the heat back into this astronaut now. There's a lot of there's a lot of variants in the heats right now. As you could tell because she was 
using that hot torch to spot heat such specific areas. Other parts have been pretty cold for a long time. So we're going to take a few more good flash heats, those heats to soak the heat into the astronaut. She'll use the hot torch to really spot heat some certain spot areas. And then we'll be loading this back into the garage. There's a really good shot on the monitor of this astronaut spinning around. I think we have actually do have one more part of the astronaut that's getting assembled. I must have missed. So we'll see. Chris is going to bring over another piece of glass. So I'm just grabbing hold of this iron now. Oh, I see. It's a little American flag on the back of the backpack. Excellent. She touches that right on there. Flatten it down a little bit. And right back to the furnace for our astronaut. Excellent. So that those are those details and all those bits that Catherine really had to think about ahead of time. So she made that little decal out of glass earlier today. I love that final touch. So she'll take a few more flashes. We're going to end up, we'll see, there's a few different things we can do here. We might punty up this astronaut again, maybe around the head or back area. That would make sense because ultimately we will be sticking the astronaut onto the moon in such a fashion that there couldn't be a punty on the feet. So Catherine's going to use that, that Dremel there. So our garage, it's, it's made of some soft bricks on the inside, and those bricks sometimes get a little dusty, and that dust will stick to the hot glass. So that she's just Dremeling away probably a little bit of unwanted dust. You have a question? Can we have it set up for a left-handed person? That is that is a very common question. So there we could, yes. Um, there are some glass studios that have benches set up for a left-handed glass blower, but it's much more common, even if you're a left-handed glass blower, to just learn how to use the tools with your right hand. 
Now, because you're just because your tool, your right hand might be your tool hand, doesn't mean it's the most important hand by any means. A good thing about being a left-handed glass blower is most lefties they learn how to turn the pipe really quickly, much more quickly than a right-handed glass blower would. And turning the pipe is probably the hardest thing to do, or definitely the hardest thing to do when you're a beginner. Learning how to turn that iron on center with hot glass on it that's moving and wants to drip on the floor. So most lefties just do end up using the right-handed bench. Anybody else have a question while we work on putting this astronaut into the garage? <laughs> or perhaps it's already in the garage. It's too busy answering that question. Oh, all right. It's in there. The astronaut's in the garage. All right. So we're cruising right along now. Catherine's going to start the process of making our moon. So this will be a blown vessel. So you guys just got to see a lot of what we call glass sculpting or bit work. And now you'll get to see some glass blowing. So she's gathered some hot glass out of our melting furnace. For those of you that might have showed up later or tuning in live online, our furnace holds around 1,000 pounds of our soda lime glass melted at 2,100 degrees Fahrenheit. So Catherine shaped and centered up that glass. Watch closely. She blew into the pipe, and just like that, a bubble appeared. So she blows into the end of the blowpipe, trapping air with her thumb. That air gets forced up that hollow stainless steel blowpipe and expands into the hot glass. So that's what we call our starter bubble. Every blown piece of glass you see up here was started in a similar fashion. Now, right now, we have enough material to make something small, like a small juice glass, maybe the top of a wine goblet, holiday ornament. But that would not be enough glass to make the moon. That's for sure. So we're going to let this glass cool down quite a bit. Now, Chris over here, he's picked up some solid color. He's shaping that up, getting it nice and hot, because that's going to be what we call a color overlay. So I'll show you folks an example of what he's picked up here. It is actually this color, too. And it's this light brown. So this is solid glass bar. We buy it from a company in Germany. They're really good at mixing and melting colors. So what he's done is he's preheated this color bar in the garage up to 1,000 degrees. He then picked up that color bar. He's heated it up quite a bit. And he's going to drip that solid piece of color over the bubble that Catherine made. We call this an overlay. It's a very common color application. And it's especially good if you want a nice, dense color. You can see how hot Chris is getting this color. It's glowing bright orange. He's shaping it up, keeping it nice and on center. And he'll take one last really good heat on that. And we'll drip that right onto the bubble. Now, the reason Catherine let this bubble get so cold is because if it was too hot or too thin, 
that bubble that she just made could collapse in on itself when we do the color drop. So it's nice and set up right now. It's just as firm as the windows here in the front of the stage. So there we go. She's dripping that on there. And she cuts it away. Now we'll start to center that overlay. And we'll kind of push and smear that colored glass right up over the clear bubble. Now overlays are really tricky to do. It's very easy to push your color around too much and get thin spots or thick spots. So Catherine's done probably hundreds, if not thousands of overlays in her life. So she'll make it look really easy. You'll see her use that steel table in the middle of the hot shop. It's called a marver. And using that marver, she'll push that color bar right back over the bubble. Oh, and we had a question while she's finishing up that overlay. You can see it's already starting to go over the bubble. She's pushing it back. Now we'll have a nice even coating of color. That'll be the base color for our moon. Now, there was a question that came through online. It was, how do you get the kiln wash from sticking to your hot glass? That was the question, right? Now, sometimes it does stick a little bit, but we simply just have these whisk brooms, and if there a little bit of dust sticks to the glass in the garage, we just sweep it right off of there. And if it really sticks, you saw Catherine earlier use that Dremel that's another fine tool for getting the dust off of the glass. But usually, the, if you see that there's dust on the glass coming out of the garage, you can take care of that really quickly if you use a little broom and sweep it off right away. Catherine's centering and shaping up that glass now on the marver. Now sometimes, it, or all the time, it takes a few heats to really get this color bar, bar melted in. Because when you first apply that overlay, there's a decent amount of texture there. Now we like to melt that texture away because we'll be taking a second gather of glass over this, probably a third too, we'll see. And if we were to gather over a bubble that has a lot of texture, we could trap unwanted air bubbles in the piece. So I see she's taking quite a long heat, so that's a good indication that she is going to smooth and center this glass out just a little bit more. And we build up glass in layers called gathers. Right now we've got one gather of glass and a color overlay. Well, most of the pieces you see here on display or if you saw a demonstration earlier today, they're all two gather pieces, but you could take three, four, five, as many gathers as you want, depending on the size of the piece. Now we're cooling that bubble down, kind of in a similar fashion when we drip, drip that overlay on top of it. We wanted it to be set up and rigid. When we gather the glass out of the furnace, we also want that bubble to be set up and rigid, probably around 1,000 degrees. Now the reason we do that is because it needs to be able to support the weight of that next gather of glass.
All right, so now that this bubble is nice and set up, Catherine's going to plunge that iron below the surface of the glass, turning in one direction. She spools that hot glass right up onto the blowpipe. And the pipe heats up quite a bit the more gathers you take. So now, like we were talking about earlier, we'll use that pipe cooler, cool that iron down so she can choke up a little bit more on the iron. If she has to hold too far back, there's not a good leverage point. It's really hard to control the glass if you're holding it too far back on the iron. All right, so we're immediately adding more layers of color, this time using our crushed up colored glass called Frit. So we used Frit to make the most of the astronaut or all of the astronaut. And this will add a nice texture This looks like a darker glass. I'm not sure what color it is. It might be gray or black. It's gray. Probably smoky gray. It's a great color. Add a little bit of depth to this moon. Earlier, Catherine and I were looking at some pictures of the moon, thinking we better figure out what the moon looks like before we try to make it out of glass. She's got a good idea in her head, she's built up this plan. So now we'll shape, center, and cool that glass. Now that's one of our wooden scoop tools called a block. We make these wooden tools of fruit woods, in this case, cherry wood. Because they have a dense grain pattern, it allows them to absorb a lot of water so they don't burn away too quickly when they touch the hot glass. And she's switching to one of our favorite tools for shaping glass. That's a few sheets of newspaper folded into thirds, soaked in water. Now that allows Catherine to shape that glass right in the palm of her hand. Now we're gonna take another gather of glass over the top of this. So once again, we're gonna let this glass set up quite a bit. And she's just spraying that with some compressed air that speeds up that cooling process. It's a great time while that glass cools. You can see she's organizing some of her tools, making sure she has what she needs, but not too many tools on the bench. So you could tell earlier from sculpting that astronaut, you don't get a lot of time to work the glass at the bench before it's too cold to actually manipulate. So if you're fumbling for a tool, you can lose a lot of valuable time. You can really start to see the color come out too as this glass cools down. It's got that dense, gray color, but as we blow this vessel up later in the later stages of this piece, that glass will become a little bit thinner and more transparent. Here you can see she's come out with quite a bit more material there. That's our third gather of glass. It starts to be a decent amount of weight to move on, move around on the end of that iron. The more gathers you get. And it's really important now that she has that leverage that she can hold the iron closer to where that weight is. So she cooled that pipe off once again. Now using a larger block will cool center, shape that glass a little bit more. And you'll start to see her blow up the vessel pretty soon. She'll be shaping with the newspaper, with the block, probably blowing into the end of the blowpipe quite a bit. 
But there's a few more bits of color application we're gonna add to this piece. She's pre-made all of these little glass craters. It's hard to see from the crowd, but they're these little bits of black glass she made today. We'll be placing those on the bubble. We'll also be doing a little bit of glass powder over here at the powder booth. So quite a bit more color application to go here. Now most of those, those last colors will probably go on a little bit later in the process because we want them to have some texture. If we were to melt that color or those crater, craters in now, they'd lose that texture that she's going for because as the glass heats up in the reheating furnace, it smooths out, it gets that, that glassy surface. But if you add those color techniques later, they'll stay raised on the surface of the glass. So they're gonna continue to uh, blow up this vessel. And while they do that, we're gonna make sure that these glass craters, they're in our garage. We're gonna load up a few at a time on the end of a, a steel plate called a paddle. We'll bring these over to Catherine one at a time and she'll pick them up and place them on the bubble, kind of in a similar fashion to how you saw her pick up all the different parts of the astronaut. They're just discussing a little bit, making sure everyone's on the same page before we do start to apply these craters to the bubble. Well, luckily, we've got a few hands on deck here, so it's always good to have a couple people when you're making a piece like this because you never know when you're going to need that extra set of hands. And Chris is loading up a few more of those craters into the garage now. And they'll use a different torch this time, map gas torch. It's not quite as hot. Oh, there's a great shot there. That was the uh, craters. We'll probably get another one of those in a little bit, but. She's got that map gas. She's heating certain area. I'll touch that right down onto the glass. This is a very thin, it's like a wafer of glass. She. She took some of our crushed up colored glass, that frit we were talking about. It's little fine granulars of glass. And she heated them up just a little bit earlier so that they kind of tack fuse together. So they're, they're super thin. Probably an eighth of an inch, not even thick. All right, just like that, we've got our first three craters. We'll, we'll put quite a few more on here.
Sounds good. So while they apply the next three, I'll be over here just setting these up. We give them a little preheat in the garage that they don't just crack when they touch the surface of that hot glass. And they're so thin that even the... I put the mediums up there, Chris. Okay. They're so thin that just that heat rising off of that steel plate does most of the work. That, that little flash in the garage is a bonus there. A lot of the time, we, folks ask us, why do you never wear gloves blowing glass when they come to our, our regular demonstrations? And we say, well, sometimes we do. And this is a great time to be wearing a glove here. Catherine's putting her hand really close to that hot bubble. And if she had to think about how hot her hand was, she couldn't focus too well on what she has to do. So that glove just gives her that extra bit of protection she needs so she can take her time and really place these right where she wants them. It's really cool each time she come, that Benjamin comes out of the furnace, you can see those little craters are super heating up really fast. She's adding, adding on a few more small craters. Melting them in, that's a really great shot. You can see how there's that little fused bit of frit. There's little negative space between all the pieces of glass. They're almost hollow. No two craters are the same. They're kind of like snowflakes. So we dropped one crater. So she's just going to try to pick that up off the ground. We might put that on there. We might get a fresh one. We do have a few more small ones over here. All right, so we'll see. I believe that that'll be the last of the craters here. We'll heat this up quite a bit more. And we're going to apply that, that powder color. It's even finer than our crushed up colored glass, our frit. It's literally like the consistency of flour. Super fine. We apply it in layers. In this case, we're going to use a little sifter to just sprinkle it right on there. And I'm sure they'll be able to give you a, a good camera view so you can see what's going on. And Catherine's just building up that heat a little bit more on the outside, that skin of the glass, so that the powder will actually stick. So Benjamin's just gently tapping the top of that sifter with some tweezers so that we just get a nice light coat of that powder. You can really see how it sticks to the surface of the glass. This will give us some really great texture in the final product.
Well, now she's using that whisk broom. It looks like she's, yep, she's sweeping some of the powder off of where she put those craters on so that they don't get covered up with too much of that white glass. All right, and right back over to the furnace. Now we've got a lot of heat to build up here. We let that bubble get pretty cold. It's not something that we usually do. But for certain pieces, it's necessary. You're not going to gather over that, right? So we've got all the, all the material we need here. We're just going to build that heat back up. And we'll start to blow and inflate the moon. This is a nice thick piece of glass right now. So the good thing about that is you can, you can take your time and work on it. The core of this vessel stays, stays very warm. The outer layers might have cooled quite a bit. But the inside was probably always still pretty hot. They were just discussing a little bit, wondering if they needed more, more powder added to the surface. I think they decided that, that this was enough. And now we'll really start to shape and inflate this piece. Another great example of the teamwork involved. We've got Benjamin shielding Catherine's hand. Chris is helping her turn. And we want that, those craters, they've got a lot of raised texture right now, so it's pretty tricky to shape with the newspaper while, while those craters kind of get stuck on the paper. So we'll get this thing pretty hot before we really start to blow it out, smooth it out quite a bit. And she's even, she's lengthening the vessel right now. She's holding it slightly at an angle, letting that top area stretch out quite a bit. She shapes with that newspaper while Benjamin blows into the end of the blowpipe. And you can really see some rapid change now as this piece starts to inflate. Now when the glass is this hot, it doesn't take much. So we've got to create a constriction at the top of this vessel. Now that's called a neckline. It's simply a weak spot in the glass so that the piece can eventually break free of the blowpipe. So a little preheat on that top area with that hot torch really allows us to focus more heat there. And she'll start to squeeze down on that neckline, shielding her hand a little bit with these paddles. We'll keep inflating the moon here. It 
back on the neckline because it's a very important part, very important step in the process. If she doesn't create this nice neckline, this piece would never break free of the blowpipe. So we've got that neckline finished, essentially. Now it's a really skinny part on top of that bubble. It's supporting all the weight as well, so she's blowing a little bit of compressed air on that neckline because now when she goes for this next heat, she doesn't want that moving around so much. So that compressed air that really force cools that area. Now Chris will have more control as he heats up the moon a little bit more. She's got that newspaper ready. It's really the best tool for blowing up a vessel like this. You can really control the thickness of the glass. You, we kind of, we hold the newspaper on the places we don't want to change as much, so it cools that bottom. You can really start to see this inflate now into that nice sphere. And this will be kind of a, even though it is the moon, it will be kind of a vessel or vase shape. We will flatten the bottom of this eventually so that it will sit flat later when it's done. So we're back to the heat now. We're flashing the piece. Now that's, that's that maintenance heat we talked a lot about earlier when we were making the astronaut. It's really a heat not to change things as much. But to just maintain a consistent temperature. Now we're going to put a little bit more of this powder on the moon. It's a really nice way to apply color. Get a nice even coating, especially when you sift it on like that. Now, as we applied that color, you kind of start to lose the shape just a touch. So Catherine's taking a little bit of air from Benjamin now, inflating the moon a little bit more. Still shaping with that newspaper. And you can see we've got that beautiful sphere now. So we're going to finish the bottom of the piece now. Catherine will shape a little bit, probably with the newspaper. And Benjamin's got that wooden paddle. He'll press into the bottom to flatten it. Now we've created that nice flat spot so this piece can sit on display.
Now that neckline, as I said earlier, it is the weakest spot of the vessel. So we want to make sure we build up a decent amount of heat in that neckline before we break the piece free of the blowpipe. And see that Chris has started up another punty there. Just a gather of glass and a solid iron there. It'll act as that temporary handle. We'll break this piece free of the blowpipe and then we'll, we'll be in the market to be shaping the top of this vessel and then adding on that astronaut. So Chris is gonna head right on over there. One last final shape. Now she'll grab hold of that punty with the tweezers. She'll just touch it right on there, right on center. And now just subtle tweaks with the tweezers. That'll ensure those irons are running true. And Chris is just kind of very loose right now. He's following Catherine's move. She'll put a few drops of water on that neckline. That'll shock the glass, and with a few light taps, the piece should break free. So there's that water, a couple more drips. And there's that tap, and the crowd goes wild for broken glass. Another successful transfer here. So now what we're left with is a small opening. It's probably around an inch in diameter, but it's rather cold. Cold in glass blowing terms. It's probably around a thousand degrees. It's sharp, it's jagged. We've got to build the heat back into the lip of the piece. We like to tool the glass when it's around 2000 degrees. So we're gonna take a heat on that lip. You can already see that it's starting to glow bright orange up there where she's focused that heat. We should use this hot torch. It's a handy tool to really spot heat certain areas. You saw her use it a lot when we were making the astronaut, but this is gonna be more of a closed form So that's kind of the opposite of what, as glassmakers, we usually do. Usually when we're on the punty like this during this process, we spend most of our time opening up a vessel, like a bowl or a platter or whatever it may be. In this case, we're actually gonna spend some time closing it up. Now once we get that shape the way Catherine wants it, We'll use that hot torch and we'll stick our astronaut right on the moon. So we're pulling and trimming this lip. That'll thin out the glass. And once she's pulled that lip out enough, we'll use a steel tool called the jacks. They're our most versatile tool. You've seen Catherine use these quite a bit and she'll squeeze with these two blades. She'll squeeze that the top of the vessel closed. Question. Yes, it was. The question was, was it all planned weeks ago to do it this week? And yes, indeed it was. Catherine's had, she's known about this live stream late show for quite some time now. And she knew what she wanted to make. We've been planning it. 
getting all the ducks in a row, making sure we're ready to go. All right, so I'm gonna jump in here, start to help a little bit. Chris is gonna go start to prep the astronaut. He's gotta get that thing warm. Now she's squeezing that constriction line, pulling out, making sure it's nice and tight there. Again, using that newspaper to round it out. This step takes multiple heats. And Benjamin started to preheat this tool here. This is, this is called the Sofietta. It allows us to blow glass even though we're no longer on a blowpipe. So it's just a cone on the end of a stainless steel handle there. It's a hollow tube. We'll blow into the moon from the outside. So Benjamin's now blowing in to the top of the moon. You can really see it inflating and rounding back out. That was very effective. It's a great way to create these rounder shapes. So we'll do that one more time to continue to round out that shape. I know every time I look up, the moon looks pretty round. So we'll make sure that we get it just right. We're always making sure we maintain that heat. So she's taking a nice deep flash now, making sure the back of the piece doesn't get too cold. And now we'll come out, we'll repeat that process. First, she'll shape just a little bit with the newspaper. Now Benjamin's blowing back in there. It's rounding right out. Excellent. We're gonna use that diamond bladed file now. That will shock that constriction point she's made. And then with a light tap, Benjamin can break that free. How about a round of applause for that move? It's a very delicate step of the process. So Chris is starting to really build the heat into that astronaut. You can see that it's already moving around. And Catherine's just knocking off a few extra chips of glass there. <laughs> and we'll heat up the lip a little bit more so it's nice and smooth, it's not sharp. And then we'll start to preheat those areas where the astronaut's going to go. And Chris is already also getting that hot torch going. So then we'll just open this up just a bit using that steel tool called the jack. She's gonna open up 
the lip of the vessel while Benjamin paddles. That compresses the lip. I'm kind of listening to them. They're talking a lot. They're really communicating during this part of the process. They're going to inflate this moon one more time here using that Sofietta. And now when we apply this astronaut, we're going to cut it right free of this punty, actually right into a pair of these Kevlar gloves. And Catherine will catch the astronaut, will heat up the boots, and we'll be able to stick the astronaut right to the top of the moon. Excellent. So we just rounded that out with the Sofietta, really finalizing that shape. She's going to mark the area on the blowpipe with a little bit of chalk so that she knows and Benjamin knows when to stop turning the pipe because she has a certain place in mind for the astronaut. Benjamin's going to take a nice deep flash here, making sure that this moon doesn't get too cold. And they've broken that astronaut free. Now we'll start to heat up these feet. Now she's sticking that astronaut on there. All right, how about a round of applause for Catherine? For applying that astronaut in such a smooth fashion. All righty. So we've got our astronaut on the moon now. We're going to build up the heat. We want to harmonize the heats here and make sure that we've got a nice, even heat, heat throughout this entire sculpture of glass. It's very important that all the parts are somewhat of an equal temperature. Now the way we do that is with a few more flashes. And now when this piece is finished for the evening, we'll load it into our annealing oven. We won't get to see it until tomorrow because we need to cool glass down very slowly. For this piece, we'll probably won't get to see our astronaut on the moon for a few days. <clears throat> now, the thicker the glass, the longer we anneal it. So that's annealing, that's relieving the glass of stress. And since that astronaut is all solid sculpted, we really want to cool the piece down very slowly. And it's very important also to really equalize temps 
in the astronaut now because we added all those parts at different times. So all those connection points need to make sure they're nice and happy before we shock this glass by breaking it free of the punty. So we've taken probably our final flash here. Just a little more heat with that torch onto the top of the astronaut. Now a few drops of water on that punty site, that should shock the glass. And with a few light taps, the piece should break free. Now we'll fire polish that later so that it's not sharp. How about that? Now into our kneeling oven. We'll get to see this piece in a few days. Excellent, safe and sound. Excellent, so Catherine Ayers, everyone, and Chris Rochelle and Benjamin Ewing.